All right, so as we take a look at other news making headlines during the SAWA, the DA Federal Council Chairperson Helen Ziller has called on party members in leadership positions to lead with integrity. She was speaking during the DA's Provincial Congress in Middleburg, Bumalanga, where about 300 delegates have voted for the new leadership, where Jane Sitole retained her position unopposed as a provincial leader. Azira says that the DA is already preparing for the 2024 elections with an intention to wrestle power from the ruling party. So on that note, um, we're going to be in discussion um, with Meki Mahoba, political analyst to Wayne further. Um, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time here on the SABC. Uh, we've seen that the DA, you know, concluded its provincial conference in Bumalanga. And, and I wonder, you know, how much support does the DA have as the main opposition in the province? I think their support has declined in the past years. And with that, especially in Pumalanga, there's no prospect of the DA ever becoming a dominant political party there. Uh, but for South Africans, that's not, that's not really a big issue because the, the DA is an ideological alliance of the ANC. Whether the DA or the ANC is doing well, the misery that is facing a lot of South Africans is going to continue because these are two neoliberal parties that continue to promote policies that have failed in the past eight years. So the DA is a little bit struggling, but they also have an influence because they are able to hold the, the ANC to account in terms of making sure that wherever there's corruption in government has been exposed. And I think that for that, they do deserve credits. But in terms of leading South Africa out of unemployment, inequality, and largely the oppression of black people, I think there's no hope in those departments. Um, Dr. Meki, I'm, I'm so sorry, I actually um, needed to afford that um, title to you. On the back of what you've just echoed, then how significant is it for the party to perhaps sort out its internal issues that are playing out, especially when they want to gain more support in areas like Mbomalanga that are predominantly, you know, dominated by the ANC and the EFF ahead of 2024, perhaps and beyond? I think for, for, the, for the DA, the biggest issue has been racism that masquerades mm -hmm. as liberalism and non-racialism. And I think if they don't resolve that, they're still going to have these internal battles that are largely based on racism. But since they have a black woman in government, I mean, in leadership, uh, that's that's augur some hope for them, but the uh, the problems affecting the DA are quite structural. I we don't think the DA is able of transforming itself in order to to attract a lot of black people because many of black people are suspicious towards the DA because they think that it's a it's a white party that only uses uh, black people for technistic reasons. And in the past, and how they have treated uh, prominent black leaders in South Africa, that does have some truth in it. And unless they deal with the issues of uh, uh, racism, they are going to ex experience these problems. But also one has to give the DA some credits in terms of the municipalities that, that they have run in terms of dealing with ish corruption as a legal issue they've managed to to deal with that and uh, acquire some clean audits but when you look at corruption differently where we're looking at corruption politically the da alongside the anc are one of the most corrupt political parties in south africa which continue to perpetuate the myth that neoliberalism is our solution whereas in the past eight years we've seen the devastating effects of this uh, economic framework okay so you're speaking about ideology we'll get into that a little um later on i think just just um on the on what's happening in Mpumalanga, we heard you know the federal leader calling for integrity amongst its leaders looking at the state of government in that particular province what contribution can the da bring in that local government given you know as you spoke about the positive um success stories perhaps in other provinces and how it could be adapted somewhat I think that what the DS has been managed to do in the past, which is to keep the ANC on its toes, to make sure that each political leader of the ANC who's in government and who's corrupt, the DA is able to put that on national agenda. And I think for that, they deserve some credits. And I think in some way or another, 
that's a form of influence and i think the da across south africa has that ability to ensure that if a member of the ANC is found wanting and is corrupt, they are able to bring uh, that person into exposure and everybody else is able to see that maybe the ANC is, is failing. And they use the language such as constitutionalism, integrity, but that's the only thing they can offer. Beyond that, I don't see that the DA has a future in Pumalanga. Let's extend the conversation now to South Africa as we head into 2024. Um, we're looking at the democratic alternative that the DA could offer the country. Um, I'm asking this because we heard, you know, its leader John Stianes and speaking about how it wants to really engage more on a policy level rather than continuing to bash the ANC. So when we look at the alternatives that have been an offer, perhaps on issues related to health care and the um, health, the national health insurance, perhaps ESCOM, uh, even the economy, the economic principles and ideology, how would you weigh in on that? How do you think that's translated, perceived and received? I think, as I've said in the beginning, that the DA and the ANC are uh, ideological alliances, which means they pursue the, the, uh, the, the same market-based economies, which are based on corporate domination, which... Uh, is all about how can capital make more money and how can capital operate without red tapes and obstacles. And those policies have failed. But the difference is that the DA does not have history of corruption as compared to the ANC. And I think in terms of policy, that's the only alter alternative they can offer. But in terms of fundamental policies that can restructure this, uh, the the economic makeup of the economy in South Africa, the DA is just another ANC. The only difference is that they are less affected by corruption. If you remove corruption out of the ANC, the two organizations are going to be pursuing the same policy frameworks. Um, Dr. Mek, in conclusion, I have to bring up the issue of leadership once again. And I, I just wonder, you know, how you'd weigh in on that what will guide its framework in policy is the da in a crisis if so, just given the the resignations that have happened and if so why you've spoken about the issue of race um, and other dynamics what could they also do to bounce back particularly this critical time as we head into 2024 and beyond i think they should quit firstly being a classist and urban party and respond to the issues and the needs of black South African generally because that's the majority. If their message does not resonate with a lot of black people, they're still going to struggle with the uh, with uh, displacing the ANC and the EFF. And most importantly, that speaks to the issue, cultural issues of racism because that's the big elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. If they want to take over power but are still affected by issues of racism, that will create fears in many South Africans that is this another apartheid government in waiting because many people associate white leadership in South Africa with colonialism and apartheid. And DA still more or less perpetuate such a government which is urbanized, which is based on a, a class project. And once they can deal with that, issue of racism and able to are uh, able to distill their message in a way that genuinely responds to the to the needs of the black majority in south africa they have a future but that requires a lot of responsibility because white supremacy remains a normative visions in the da and for that to change it's going to take some admitting and it's going to take some years because they have been a, a, a combination of different parties that operated under apartheid and those cultural frameworks are still within the DA, which means if they need some cultural change, it is going to do a lot of uh, introspection. Maybe they can even engage more with black leaders that are not necessarily conservative because if you check, majority of black leaders that warm up to the DA are not are a specific form of black leaders which are more conservative and liberals those ones who believe largely into the fact that black people have been oppressed even under this democracy and that is not because of the corruption of the ANC is because the structure of the economy has not much been transformed you will not find such a person in the DA and once they manage to broaden the type of black people they are uh, they attract maybe the party can grow nationally 
Dr. Meki, thank you for your time here on the ACBC um, and for echoing their sentiments. Dr. Meki Mahoba weighing in on the dynamics transpiring in the Democratic Alliance, the impact that um, they will have in Pumalanga. This is on the back of the DA's Provincial Congress that happened in Middleburg over the weekend and perhaps also the impact on a national level. Again, Dr. Meki Mahoba is a political analyst weighing on that.